What's up guys? I just put out a video for my top 10 underrated final girls. So many people in the comments were throwing names out there that weren't necessarily underrated. And I told them the elite list is coming soon. That's what we're doing today. We're going to give you my top 10 plus five honorable mentions, horror final girl elites. So let's go. What's up guys? Man, this was such a tough list to put together. There's a lot of horror movies out there. And you know, to be a, an elite final girl, to really stand out above the pack, it takes a, a few qualities, you know? And, and sometimes it's hard to, to figure out what that quality is, but it just happens, it just shines. And I'm sure that I'm not going to uh, name some names that you, you're thinking of, okay? Give you an example. Uh, I think Julie Johnson from I Know What You Did Last Summer. She's a great final girl. She didn't make the list, all right? So anyway, five honorable mentions. And this isn't an honorable mention. Uh, it's a special mention. And the reason being is because I haven't seen the movie yet, but I saw so many people mentioning this character, Yasmin, from the movie Frontiers. It's a French horror movie from, I think, the creators of High Tension. And even shout out to a friend of mine, uh, Julie. She mentioned uh, Frontiers, Yasmin from Frontiers. So I definitely wanted to give her a special mention. I will be watching and reviewing that movie really soon. I almost watched it today, but then it ended up watching Killer Party. So that's on my next to watch and review list because just because I keep hearing these, these great things about this character, Yasmin. Okay, so five honorable mentions. Gonna do these real quick. First honorable mention is Aaron Jessica Beale from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. And you know, I've given the remake the business, I guess, over the past few months comparing it to the original. But all said and done, it's still a very good movie. It's still one of the best remakes out there. And one reason for that is because of Jessica Biel. Like to me, Jessica Biel is high, high above every other character in that movie besides Arlie Ermey, of course, okay? As Hoyt, he's amazing as Hoyt. But Jessica Biel, the glaringly obvious thing is she's probably the most beautiful woman on this list. And there's a lot of beautiful women on this list, but Jessica Biel, if you want attractiveness to your final girl, then she definitely checks that box, okay? But, you know, in terms of like channeling emotion, she does a great job with that, you know, especially in the last act of this movie. It gets pretty damn intense and she sells it. As a matter of fact, Jessica Biel is in every single one of my intros when I don't do like reviews. If I just use my normal Drum Dums intro, it's Jessica Biel and Sarah from The Descent. Every video. Next I want to mention is Max from The Final Girls. I love her because there's this nice relationship with her mother. So there's a lot of heart to this movie. And she's thrust in this situation where she, you know, because her mother was like an 80s slasher scream queen. And she's thrust into a movie that her mother was in, which is an irresistible premise. And this is one of those cases where a PG-13 rating is fine. It, this movie gets away with it because... It's such a good and heartwarming story that you don't need the kills as much. And it's it's really like a horror comedy. That's what it is. But, man, she is such an infectious character. And she brings a tear to your eye with some nice moments with her mother at the end. And then she's, like, running uh, from the killer. Next on mission, I'm going to go with Jay from It Follows. Jay is technically a final girl. She's one of the few final girls that actually has sex in the movie. And that just goes to show that you can break the rules in terms of being a final girl. And I'm sure there's others that have had sex. You know, way back in like the you know 70s with like Halloween, that was kind of the rule. You can't have sex. They even say it in the screen. But Jay definitely has sex in this movie. And sex is a big part of getting away from it. Uh, if, you, if you have sex, you pass it on. But Jay's struggle throughout this, you know, just a really great performance by Maka Monroe. And people don't give horror actresses enough credit in the, the acting department. It is one of the stronger performances I've seen in basically a, a slasher movie. That's really what It Follows is. Just a slasher movie in the form uh, of elevated horror. I got you. You, got, you fuckers are going to go down below and you're going to be like, no, it's not elevated horror. Okay, whatever. Uh, next time we'll mention, you got to mention the Italian horror goddess Edwidge Finish. This is pretty much, in my opinion, the most beautiful woman on the planet, okay? And I haven't seen all of her movies, but I've seen a few of them. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward is one that really comes to mind. You know, she was just in so many of those movies, those Italian horror movies back in the early 70s. And she became the Italian horror scream queen deservingly so 
She's beautiful, but she's also a great actress. And she has this sympathetic quality to her. Like, you can't help but, like, feel sorry for her. Especially in, like, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. I just felt so bad for this character. And so, super excited to put Edwidge on uh, one of these lists. And then last honorable mention, I'm going to go with Tree from the Happy Death Day movies. I don't really like the movies that much just because, don't get me wrong, I like a good horror comedy, but if you're a slasher and you're marketing yourself as a slasher, I want some nice kills in there, you know, because the comedy, the characters are decent in those movies. Every single kill is a cutaway because, you know, she wakes up every time she dies. By the way, this is... One of the few cases where the final girl dies like multiple times in the movie. But she just keeps coming back. But the big thing about uh, Jessica Roth is she is such a likable character. She has great comedic timing. That's not an easy feat to pull off. And uh, you care. You really care about her as a character throughout these movies. She is the cornerstone of these movies. And I liked her so much that I kept thinking, man, I would love to see her in just a straight up balls to the wall horror movie. You know, pulling no punches, doesn't have to be a horror comedy, I'd prefer it not be. I would love to see Jessica Roth really flex her horror muscles and she could become the next Scream Queen. I think she could easily do that. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with me on that. Okay, top 10, here we go. Number 10, I'm gonna go Jamie Lloyd. All right, and, and I put Rachel as number one on the underrated. But Jamie Lloyd, people do mention her all the time, and I think she deserves to be on this list for a couple reasons. One, because she was a child, you know, and to, to be able to pull off a commanding performance at such a young age, no easy feat, and Daniel Harris pulls it off. She does a great job. You're constantly with her throughout Halloween 4 and 5, and, you know, what happens to her at the end of 4 is tragic. But... You know, a lot of times kids in horror movies, at a certain point, they can become annoying. It's, I don't know why, it's a weird thing, but they can. It's harder for us to, I guess, stay on board with a child star uh, more than it is an adult. Danielle Harris pulls it off, especially in the moments where, you know, she's running from Michael Myers, she's scared, and she goes through a lot. You know, she, she technically dies in part three, but I put her on here because this could just be from one movie. So technically, I could say Halloween 4, because there's so many horror franchises where the final girl ended up dying in the next movie. It, it's happened. But definitely some love for Jamie Lloyd. Number nine, Tina Shepard from Friday the 13th Part 7. You have to put this character on here. She's one of the few that actually has a, I guess, a superpower. I remember seeing this movie in the theater. This was the first Friday movie I saw in the theater. When that showdown happens between her and Jason, it was the first time I almost felt scared for Jason. Like, she was that powerful. He had really no control over her whatsoever because he's pretty much just a brute where she could literally with her mind lift him up. If she was, you know, powerful enough, she probably could have just split his body in half. She just wasn't at that level yet. But uh, Laura Park Lincoln really gave a lot to that character in, you know, vulnerability and emotion and strength. All of it was there. And I think if it was just a standalone movie, instead of part seven in Friday the 13th, she would have become more of a legend. Um, but it's, it's kind of like a, com a combining of Carrie and Friday the 13th. Number eight, Jess from Black Christmas. Really, I think Black Christmas set the template for the modern slasher. You could even argue back and say Bay of Blood might have. Bay of Blood, I would say it set the template for the modern camp slasher. Just overall, the slasher vibe Black Christmas. And you can see a lot of Black Christmas in Halloween. But Jess, even still to this day, she's such a unique final girl because this is 1974. This is a character that's breaking off her relationship with this guy. She's pregnant and she wants to get an abortion. That's heavy shit. And the reason Bob Clark did that is because he wanted to make characters that weren't dimwits, that weren't dumb, that were smart, intelligent. I guess Bob Clark was just a character guy. He loved giving rich, deep characters. And Jess is just that. She's not like your Sarah Connor. You know, this is a different type of character. She's strong-willed. She can think for herself. She doesn't need a man. So I, I like Jess because she fits a certain mold of Final Girl. Because a lot of these Final Girls, they're versatile. You know, they, they fit different qualities. I wouldn't want every single Final Girl in my movie to be just female Arnold Schwarzenegger. Number seven, 
Lori Strode. And that's going to be surprising and probably hurtful to some of you guys. Because I know some of you love Lori Strode so much. She's on the list, all right? Every single person on this list I do love as a final girl. Lori Strode's just not my all-time favorite final girl. But having said that, Jamie Lee Curtis gave that character quite an arc. Especially if you look at her from the first movie all the way to Halloween Kills, even though she doesn't really do that much in Halloween Kills. So really 2018. It's kind of cheating because she has two or, or maybe even three different timelines in the franchise. But you know that's power when just your presence, your star power alone can get a movie made. You know, very few can do that. Only a couple can do that. Jamie Lee Curtis is that powerful that if she steps forward, you know, to the Akkads and says, okay, I'll come back for another movie. Boom, let's green light a Halloween movie. That's what happened. They had Halloween Returns that was go for launch. And then as soon as Jamie Lee Curtis came in the picture, chop, we're done. Let's, uh, let's press forward with this vision. I don't know everything that went on behind the scenes, but that's probably a pretty good guess. You know, I was talking about how you have to fit certain molds uh, as a final girl. She fit that mold of innocence in the first movie. Strength eventually comes, but not in the first movie. The first movie is more about taking this character that is so damn innocent, you know, all the way down to like the way she looks, her clothes, everything. And Jamie Lee Curtis embodied that perfectly. And she's a great actress because that wasn't who she was in real life. You know, she said she was always more like Linda and Annie. But she ended up playing the character who she thought wasn't really fun, you know. But she was smart. She was pretty much the virgin. So Laura Sturt has a lot of fans, rightfully so. And she definitely belongs on the list of greatest final girls ever. Number six, Sydney Prescott from Scream. This might be the best final girl in terms of range, you know, covering an entire franchise. Very few of them, if any, make it in every movie. I think she might be the only one that is in every single movie in a franchise and we want her there, you know? There isn't like this fan base, like say Laurie Strode, where they're like, I don't want her in any more movies. Please get her out of here. That never happens with uh, Nev Campbell. Every single time a new Scream movie is announced, I want Nev Campbell. When is she going to be in the movie? Can you please let me know? You know, and that's, that says something. People love the character so much. And I think she embodies vulnerability more than any of them because there's so many moments where she is having almost like an emotional breakdown, severe neck pain. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> she always holds her neck. She, she always goes for broke in the final acts of these movies. Uh, I would even say like... The, the last act of Scream 2, I loved her the most. Because she has to not only stand up to one, but two killers most of the time. And she is like one final girl that we never want to die. Don't you dare kill her. Number five, Erin from You're Next. And that says a lot about a final girl when she's this new. You know, You're Next came out uh, probably a decade ago. Man, did this character make a mark. If you want a physical final girl, Erin is your girl. She's smart too. Her daddy gave her survival training in the woods. She's the final girl you do not want to fuck with at all. Not one, but three killers come in the house. Immediately, she goes into fight or flight mode. She knows exactly what to do. You know, she's, she's nailing up windows. She's telling everybody else, you go here, you go here. You know, female Rambo. And I'm just like, yes, I love this character so much. She's such a badass. If I want that type of final girl, I throw in your next every time. And you know what? No other final girl can compete even close with Aaron in terms of being able to cook fools. God bless you, Aaron. God bless you. Shawnee Vincent, people. Shawnee Vincent. Number four, Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Heather Langenkamp was so good in the first Nightmare on Elm Street, and we were reminded of that with the remake. I think, if anything, the remake taught us how hard it is to nail down Nancy. You know, you have to have, like, there's probably a checklist of, like, 10 things that you could possibly have as a final girl. Nancy has eight of them. You know, that's how good she is. You want strength? You've got strength. You want um, resourcefulness? you got resourcefulness. You want intelligence? She's got that, too. You want a character that thinks ahead two steps at a time? you got that with Nancy. 
and she's going against arguably the most dangerous um, killer because he's in your dreams. So she figures out a way to pull this guy out of the dreams and fight him. And this is a character that goes through a lot too because she has to watch all her friends die and nobody believes her. It's not like a normal slasher where it's right out there in the open when the friends die, everybody knows there's a killer on the loose. No, their friends die in their sleep. And you know, so of course, nobody believes her. And she has to take like sleeping pills. That's a tough thing to do. Have you ever tried to go even 24 hours without sleeping? It's torture. You know, just that idea of the nightmare movies is so good and watching a character try to navigate that and fight off this like ultimate evil. Heather Langenkamp did it in spades. Okay, here we go. Top three. Number three, Kirsty from Hellraiser. Um, I actually met Ashley Lawrence and I, I told her how important Kirsty was as a character for me. And I guess like Nancy, she checks a lot of boxes, but also it's just her situation, you know. She's thrust in the middle of this, you know, this divorce between her parents and her father is with this new woman. You got this maniac, Frank, that comes into the fold. He's manipulative and, you know, he gets the hots for Kirsty and all that. So eventually he releases uh, Pinhead. I'll tell you this, if I were, uh, I guess, a final boy, the last person I would ever want to go against is Pinhead. Pinhead freaks me the fuck out. It's not really like a, a Nightmare on Elm Street type thing where it's in your dreams. No, he does come to your plane. He, he is on Earth. He doesn't have to do a thing. He doesn't have to touch you. He's got his minions that can just throw these freaking chains out and grab you. So this is a case where you know this final girl, she can't win. He could kill her just like that. And that's a unique situation because every final girl has a fighting chance. But... This is a situation where if, if Pinhead wanted it, she'd be dead just like that. So this is a character that has to be extremely intelligent to figure out how to beat this guy. And so she negotiates with him. You know, she tells him, if you, you know, if you don't kill me, I can take you to Frank. I know where Frank is. And so that's just, it's an irresistible situation just watching this character try to figure out. Can you imagine the, the, the danger that she would be in, the, the fear that she would have? But Kirsty, not just that, she was feisty as hell. My favorite scene is like when Frank is telling her to give him the box and she's like, no, fuck you. And she like throws it out the window and runs away. Feisty. That's what I loved about Kirsty. She's so damn feisty. I love an actress that just gives a character so much life and takes you through this like emotional struggle. And Kirsty, you know, she runs through the gamut. And Ashley Lawrence just did a fantastic job. Number two, Jenny. Amy Steele from Friday the 13th, part two. And you know what? Amy Steele is the one final girl that, at face value, it's hard to tell what it is about her that, I guess, rises up above the pack, you know? Because at face value, what more does she do than, I guess, a lot of final girls do? And to me, it's just simple. She is willing to fight tooth and nail and never give up you know she has that quality about her you know the the chase scene if you remember from friday the 13th part th part two is very long and you know she's running through the woods and then once she gets to jason's uh cabin she tricks him she figures out that if she disguises herself as his mother then she can get the upper hand and so we all we always love characters like that and, and i think jenny embodies what separates um the elites from the rest of the pack you know they they don't just run and by chance fight and win no they tend to more times than not have a plan and that's what jenny is jenny had a plan uh at a certain point she realized okay i i know how i can beat him and she sets it in, into motion but also amy still talk about likability like this is a, an actress that really had this quality that you can't really learn it's just there you know like, I guess like a lot of actors, they have a certain, like De Niro. And I'm not trying to compare Amy Steele to De Niro acting wise, but I'm just saying there's a quality there that you can't replicate. It's just there and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's, that's Amy Steele. When you see her in Friday Part 2, you're like, that's it. I, she has something there. I don't know what it is, but that's it right there. And automatically I knew she was going to be the final girl. Okay, number one. 
Number one, and you know what? I'm going to cheat on this one because you're gonna get two number ones. I could not put one above the other. These two are so important and you probably know who I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, Ripley and Sarah Connor. Because there's been so many debates about which one is better. And you can't really answer that question because they both have different qualities. Sarah Connor is really the ultimate character arc for a final girl. She's the best character arc that's ever been out there. Watching her just be this waitress that seems very weak, like at face value, she seems like she'd be the first one to get killed. And then somehow along the way, she figures out that she's the future. She's the reason why John Connor is going to exist. He's gonna be the ultimate fighting machine against the Terminators. She's the mother. She realizes that along the way, and at the end of the movie, she snaps into motion, you know, on your feet, soldier. And that happens really late in the movie. People don't realize that. This isn't something that happens like at the middle. This happens pretty late in the movie, but automatically you're, you're locked in. You know, it clicks. There's just something there. And the reason being is because love. She had this beautiful connection with Kyle Reese. And I think if you didn't have that, then she wouldn't be as important. It's the one case where love causes strength. And so she realizes that she has something to lose, the future. Ripley is a different story because it's less of a character arc. The, the strength was always there in Ripley, you know? She, but she wasn't even like the commanding officer. Uh, she was just, you know, she blended in with the pack. So at the beginning of Alien, you didn't know that it was Sigourney Weaver, Ripley, that was going to last at the end of the movie. And so I like that um, at the beginning of Alien, Everyone has equal footing. It could be anybody. And Ripley kind of rises above the pack. She's the one at the end that has to go against pretty much the scariest being in the universe, a xenomorph. And she figures out how to beat the thing. But Sigourney Weaver has even stated that a lot of actresses would probably play Ripley a certain way, thinking that that would be the way. But Ripley has a, a feminine quality to her that's always there. No matter how tough she is, that, that strong sense of feminism is still always there. And no other actress can pull it off like Sigourney Weaver. I think that's the reason why they've never dared try to recast uh, Ripley. So I hope you forgive me for uh, giving you two number ones, but uh, Sarah Connor and freaking Ellen Ripley, freaking legends, right? So let me know down in the comments which ones I missed. I'm sure you will. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for Fridays. Follow my drum drums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And drum drum out.